Welcome to episode three of Podly, the official Peacemaker Companion podcast brought to you by HBO Max and DC. The plot thickens, and so does Peacemaker, as him and Vigilante have a cheeky menage a trois, so we'll get into that. But first, we will have an amazing interview with Danielle Brooks, who plays Adebayo in Peacemaker. So we've got a bunch of questions for her. We're going to chat it, vibe in, and just asking her a few cheeky, cheeky little questions. So let's get into it. Why is there a bald eagle in your car? It's eagle. Eagly is your pet eagle. Yeah. Is your dog named Doggy? <laughs> All right. Do you have a daughter named Daughtery? <laughs> hey, how's it going? I'm Ify Wadiwe. And I'm Fiona Nova. And this is Podly, the official Peacemaker Companion podcast from HBO Max and DC. And we're going to get into some super fun stuff. This is the third episode. We've been mm -hmm. doing this three episodes now, but just once more. This is a companion podcast. This is episode three, companion podcast to episode three of The Peacemaker Show. If you have not watched episode three yet, hit pause, go back, watch it, and then come back to us after you're done watching it because spoilers for episode three, ahoy. We're about to go all in. Well, okay, yeah, so we jump into every, they're, they're prepping for this, I guess, excursion they're about yeah, to yeah. go to. Where they're going to check out this Senator Goff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, interview. Senator Goff. And so where they're all chatting. And then uh, the best part about this scene is when Vigilante is hiding mm -hmm. behind the dumpster. <laughs> yeah. But everyone can see him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he's, he's trying his best to, to spy on them, but just doing a horrible job. Mm -hmm. And when he gets caught, just is. Yeah. Is just trying to figure everything out. And he just does not take that helmet off. It's really great. No, I think it's good. It adds to his charm. Oh, we yeah. love to see it. And then also something of of note, Peacemaker being left-handed. Which is not shocking. Why does that not shock me? I don't know. Something about him looks like he could be a left-handed person. I don't yeah, yeah, know. Yeah. You he know when you see someone and you're energy. like, you possibly, yeah, the left-handed energy. You po you probably are left-handed. I mm -hmm. don't know why, but something about it. Yeah, something about it. <laughs> It's the great. energies yeah yeah i just the I don't, vibes it's like what i don't mm, okay. <laughs> yeah. you, got, mm, you got that left hand energy mm -hmm. yeah yeah but so yeah so we're gonna check out senator goff who possibly the, the entire family mm -hmm. are butterflies yeah. so they're gonna check it out they're gonna scope it out up until this moment we had no clue what butterflies are mm -hmm. and then we um and then we, this is where we finally get answers. But I think the first clue is we <laughs> see them put like weird, weird they're extension. Yeah, they're sucking up. something up. It's like out their of a meal, bowl. like a yeah. porridge or some, some kind. Yeah. Yeah. But I think, um, especially in this episode, we really get to see that uh, Peacemaker is, you know, possibly is a Peacemaker and doesn't really want to like kill the kid yeah kids there's multiple kids yeah and so he's kind of hesitant on that um and he doesn't really want to so he yeah, yeah. he actually really badly draws the dove yeah yeah on the on the side of yeah, his yeah. yeah because remember he needs yeah he needs the dove of peace yeah, to yeah, be yeah. able to use a weapon to kill <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah even with that even with the dove of peace he wasn't able to kill the kids but you know who was able to kill kids vigilante yeah he, he got without up in a, there. without a hesitation <laughs> yeah just 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 went ham yeah he went ham and it was in the most caring and thoughtful way yeah. to peacemaker it was like hey man don't worry i got this yeah Sit, take a break yeah, yeah just uh <laughs> just you, don't you want do snacks you want yeah. snacks you want water yeah just, just let uh, me kill him yeah. <laughs> vigilante always being so caring and being so great yeah i mean yeah, I, I I think it again. This is this is opening us up to Peacemaker's personality, his beliefs, his his vows, essentially, just like understanding what kind of a guy he is. I mean, does he care? Does he care to kill people? No, but at least he has a soft spot for kids. Yeah, which most people should have. I yeah. think. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, then um, you know after all the killing does start, we get to meet uh, Judo Master, which we do. Yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah we do meet we, him. We with, see. We see him 
Yeah. We see him with the, the bodyguard. Guard. Yeah, and he's eating the, ch- and the Cheetos. And he's eating the Cheetos. He's with the bodyguard. And we do get a little glimpse where they say, like, hey, he's like he's like a martial arts pro. Well, also we get a glimpse of him eating the chips. And he's like, can I have some? He's like, no. He's like, well, I don't need the cards anyway. And he's like, clearly. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> like, <laughs> so dang. sassy. And the yeah. way he was walking was very sassy, too. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah he was like, what a weird. I, I think. I think just like. James Gunn adding these characters that I know I would have never heard of. Yeah. If I, just someone who, again, hasn't really gone into the comic books and doesn't really like know the world like you do, I would have never heard of a judo master. Yeah. yeah. Or, or like any of those kinds of characters. But it's just so funny to see how, how James Gunn portrays them. Yeah. Oh, 100%. Mm-hmm. Especially like seeing him underground Mm -hmm. with 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 him and just getting like all those um getting getting all like the chips kicked at him (laughs) oh yeah well okay yeah so like there was that uh essentially like a torture scene Mm -hmm. poor vigilante had to endure some partial partial well so yes but also like some and i'm gonna read this right off the card here shock and balls Does that change your mind? Sorry, pal. Not for sale. <gasps> what? Give it all you got. No, 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 no. Ah! <laughs> what was so funny about that was Peacemaker being like, I'm not going to tell you. Yeah. It's not going to make me. And just him just uh, not having to deal with the pain of being stubborn. Yeah. But that yes, was, yeah, essentially he yeah. was kind of like, yeah, the balls okay. were getting shocked up. Yeah, he was like, hey, I'm not going to tell you anything. And the poor vigilante's like, please tell her. Yeah, yeah please just tell <laughs> Please, I am in so much pain. Yeah, oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, finally towards the end, we do realize that actually butterflies are, in fact, butterflies to yeah. no one's shock. And they are in the person's brain. Mm-hmm feeding off of them you know, controlling we, them yeah it, fe- it definitely felt like a situation where like they were controlling the body we don't really know what they are mm-hmm. but we get a glimpse of finally they are in fact butterflies in yeah. a way we finally get a glimpse of what maybe the essentially the big situation of the whole season is yeah the project butterfly, butterfly. Yeah. yeah and okay yeah. especially when you see that there's a huge infestation when it says potential butterflies and it's just yeah off the charts there's a huge and then also and then let's not forget poor judo master getting the shit knocked out of him <laughs> uh and is now probably in the back of that truck <laughs> yeah yeah. And his poor guy. I mean, he was beating everyone up. Yeah. He and was beating everyone up, but he was not expecting that. Yeah. So another thing I want to talk about is that moment with, you know, Harcourt and Peacemaker. Because, you know, episode one we saw they got off to a really uh on a really bad foot. Episode two, she wasn't a big fan of him, but they actually connected in a big way, knowing that you know, they're both their fathers kind of put them in the position of being these killers very early on yeah. in their in their lives. Yeah, so yeah. I don't know, you know, I know I know it seems like a mile away, but mm-hmm. maybe maybe Peacemaker's the one who can get yeah. Harcourt to open up. I mean, I think I felt like we could we can already tell that they're probably gonna have an up like their relationship's probably gonna get better. Or maybe it gets worse before it gets better. But you could see that they're going to have probably a bonding. And um, seeing it in episode three was just, that was it. It was like the the parental issues that they're dealing with. Which, honestly, I feel like a lot of these characters are dealing with parental issues. We've yeah. got like Adebayo too that's dealing with her mom being Amanda Waller. Yeah. But going back to that heart, heart to heart with Har- 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 Harcourt. Heart to heart with Harcourt. Uh, yeah, <laughs> um, we get to see like uh, you get you have that vulnerability moment, but I also love this kind of romantic moment in a way where it was like fireflies and the hair was blowing and she was with the gun and she's beautiful. Not like I was falling in love with her, <laughs> but essentially, uh-huh. but essentially, like yeah, it was. I guess you don't really know what. Ca- I guess you just don't really know how Peacemaker is feeling after that. Is it romantic feelings? Is it just feelings of understanding? Is it just friendship feelings? Who knows? But, I mean, I think there's a lot of things there that could probably put them together 
I think we're going to see that relationship evolve eventually. So yeah. That was our sort of recap yeah, yeah, of this we, episode, but we have an amazing interview mm-hmm. happening in just a little bit with Daniel Brooks, who plays so, Adebayo. So let's just jump into it. Mm-hmm. Hello, everyone. Joining me today, we have the wonderful and beautiful Danielle Brooks. You might realize Ify isn't here with me, but... I got this. I can take care of this. So I'm going to be chatting with Danielle Brooks and just talking and vibing about everything and anything Peacemaker. Let's get into it. So Danielle, without giving anything away, what has been like your favorite scene or sequence to film so far in Peacemaker? I feel like this, like, don't give anything away, but tell us something. I don't like, (laughs) I don't know. Um, No, I would say the first time you meet this new black ops team and i don't think that's giving anything away Mm -hmm. uh we kind of like introduce all of the characters in the space and and i feel like i feel like that was the day like james gunn kind of hazed me a little bit because he had me like improv and i guess he was enjoying it so much that he just kept making me do it over and over and over so the first big scene well, it's kind of the second one where you see her, but um, one of like the first scenes that you will meet at a bio and all of these characters, um, I improv that whole thing. And I remember James just laughing over and over where he couldn't even like, he was like, now try this, now try this. But every time you say he would be like, <laughs> now try that. he couldn't get it out. It was so much fun, but it was scary because I was like, I felt like, am I doing this right? Because you have me keep doing this over and over and I don't know. But uh, he ended up using it and, it, and so that 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 made me feel good. And it was a fun day and and the cast were so silly. Like, um, we, it was just, they were recording me. And so it's all this stuff, but we had a good time. And so that's something I'll never forget. Yeah, it just sound it just I, I told this to everyone, but it looked like you guys had so much fun just shooting this show. It seemed like there was a lot of improv and comedy. So I I, I feel like you guys had the best time. We definitely had a good time shooting this. I mean, we, unfortunately, but we were doing it during COVID. So we mm. weren't able to spend like personal time with each other, but our time on set was um, more than enough to get to have a good time and hang out and um, get to know each other, you know, during this whole thing. Mm -hmm. And it's definitely a boys club. Uh, Myself and Jennifer Holland were privy to, uh, but it was, it was a lot of fun. And I had a good Mm -hmm. time cutting up with them and and cracking jokes and trying to keep up with their humor. (laughs) Uh huh. No, it just seemed, everyone is hilarious. So it just seemed like you guys had the best time. But so how did it feel like acting opposite of John Cena? It seems like there was obviously these comedic moments, but you also had to have those pretty serious and vulnerable m- moments as well. How, how was all that? It was fun watching him work. You know, he's very focused. Um, but he's super talented, especially with the improv. Just was really, really talented. Um, when it came when it comes to to the improv and and of course the action like I tried to take as as much knowledge from him on that and I and I think the biggest thing I learned was like if you don't have to do it then don't do it you know like he's very much like don't hurt your knees if you don't have to hurt your knees um, so I, I uh, it, it was fun getting to to learn from him too especially with the action being it was so new for me Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, yeah, let's, let's talk about that. It's, so the stunt coordination, the, the, the action parts, you, you, you've you never really done something like that. How was that experience for you? It was a blast and I really hope to do more of it and not just do more of it, but really do more of it with James Gunn. Like I mm-hmm. had such a good time. Like I was really nervous at first learning guns it just especially the period of time we're in right now like I don't want to touch a gun but Mm -hmm. uh it was so empowering um to be able to at the end be able to handle a gun um with the care that you're supposed to handle a gun with while looking like a badass uh that was a lot of fun and um just like I, I, I I did most of my stunts I had a wonderful um girl that did did you know all of the things for me um who's lovely 
Uh, but I did most of them myself, getting harnessed and getting thrown across the rooms and all of that stuff. So I had a, I had a great time and I would do it a hundred times over for sure. Girl, you were do you were handling guns and doing your own stunt work. Boys. Oh yeah! Oh my gosh, I would never. I'd be so scared. Oh my I'm gosh! Like, Give me more. Give mm-hmm. me more. Mm-hmm. It's fun. Girl, you nailed that. You nailed it. So there was this moment, this Mandela effect moment. Is it Bernstein and or Bernstein Stein? Wh- which one? Which one is the one that you <laughs> believe to be the truth? It is whatever Adebayo said it is, because Danielle <laughs> don't know, okay? I don't know. I, I'm going to go with Bernstein, because that's what my character believes, mm-hmm. and I think she's right. Um, but I really had no idea, and when I saw that on the page, I was like, what? I didn't even think about that. Like, that's crazy. Uh, there's so many other things like that out in the world, too. So in this episode, Goff was actually pretty much torturing vigilante into getting some information from him so i kind of want to know what kind of torture would make you talk the fastest there's there's a lot of things that could probably make me talk really fast i mean (laughs) i was thinking like if you pull my nails oh my god like if somebody tried to like take my nails off just getting my nails taken off from the nail salon like the nail shop, just doing that alone is painful. And I would, if somebody did that, then you could definitely probably get anything out of me. Uh, <laughs> what about you? I'm curious, what would yours be? Uh, nails is pretty bad. Honestly, any kind of pain, I'll probably be like, I'm good. Right. <laughs> you know? <laughs> that's, <laughs> getting, that's, yeah, that's too bad. Getting a Brazilian <laughs> You can like probably figure out a lot about me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> make mm-hmm. it stop. Right? Yeah, make it stop. I do not want to feel this again. That's why I go laser now. Oh, don't okay. do that anymore. <laughs> Brazilian hurts. Mm-hmm. So, and then there's this amazing character, Judo Master. So, Judo Master is a really fun character. And I kind of want to know, Danielle, how would you subdue Judo Master yourself? For me, Uh, I mean, first of all, can we talk about how well he smashed Vigilante or really Peacemaker with these Cheeto things? I was like, oh my gosh, that looks so painful. You know that machine that shoots the tennis Mm. balls at people? Mm. That looks painful. Mm. I think if I would, I would try to get him back like that. Um, because I, I can't go as hard as what he did to vigilante. That is just like out of this world. <laughs> I can only imagine how that possibly felt. So I'm going to go a little lighthearted and a little bit of torture with the, the tennis balls being shot at him. Ooh, that's a good one. I also think it's just so funny. You're right. Like the Cheeto, the Cheeto flick that, that looked like it hurt. It did. <laughs> Kudos to the sound of people, the sound department, because they made that sound so terrible. <laughs> so Adebayo is an amazing character. I mean, not only does she represent like the queer community, which I am part of, and it really means a lot to see that on screen, but also just her vol- being vulnerable, having to be the daughter of such a, such a, a huge character in the DC universe. I mean, I'd love to know how you feel about her and how was it, you know, portraying her at Peacemaker? Yeah, uh, it was amazing. I'm first of all, glad that you feel represented. Um, You know, I very much have enjoyed every bit of this. And, um, you know, I think that's, I know that's why I signed on to it is because I have not seen myself represented in this space. Uh, as a as a plus size girl so it meant a lot to me when James Gunn was like I have something that I wrote for you um, or have you in mind for that felt really amazing so um, yeah to get to play out of bio that's you know lesbian veterinarian lost her job and now is put into this team of 
outsiders. Um, she is now thrown into this world that she has no clue how to navigate and is faking it till she makes it. And um, that's been a lot of fun because that's pretty much what I've been doing. <laughs> You know, but she becomes the audience's perspective. I think it's almost like if you say to a regular person, hey, what would it be like for you to jump into this DC universe and be working with Peacemaker on this Black Ops team? How would you handle it? And basically that is who Leota is. She is that person stepping into this world that she has no clue how to work through. And, um, but she does have enough, I guess, street smarts to handle herself and she has to prove herself in this world. And uh, we, we see how she, she navigates that as we go along. Yeah, I mean, just like you said, I, hey, I relate to the fake in it till you make it, okay? That's what I live by. I get it. I absolutely get it. And like, I, just like you said about Leota, she is, a very relatable character and I feel for her and I, I I want her to succeed. She's like someone that I see myself as, whether she's a black, she's lesbian, she's just like, she's just like me. And it's like, it's really great to see that being represented in Peacemaker. So it's really, I'm really happy that you, like you are happy with how you portrayed her because you did a phenomenal job. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thanks. And as a, as a playing a lesbian, my, my girlfriend's pretty hot, isn't she? Ooh. <laughs> She is. That is Shout literally the Elizabeth. thing. Yeah, I that's literally her. the thing I talk about all the time. She's awesome I love to work it. with. She's really great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you guys did a, a, an amazing job. So it was really great to see your like the relationships and the interactions between honestly all the characters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, for sure. All right. Well, guys, you know what time it is. It is our favorite segment, Eagly Mail. So here's a question from one of our community members in the DC community. If there was a chance for you to take a prop costume or piece of the set home without anyone noticing, what would it be? Mm, That's a really good question. Mm -hmm. I think that I would jack um, a piece from Peacemaker's house. He had all of these really cool gnomes, like, a gnome smoking a joint or like all these gnomes just like I don't they had all these different personalities that were not so typical I would go on on them home I would take one of them home (laughs) (laughs) you're you're absolutely right I was thinking okay yeah you can go into Peacemaker grab like an awesome helmet or like an awesome costume but no the gnomes were pretty tight they are as the show goes on too. I mean, like, there's some. I would be on set being like, "Oh my gosh, this is so cool! I want this," but I didn't think to take it. <laughs> or did you? And we're or, not going to no. call oh, you yeah. out. Or didn't you? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, your secret's safe with me. You don't. You don't have it. You don't have it. You didn't take it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, Danielle, thank you so much for joining me and answering all oh, these yeah. questions. I've absolutely loved your work um, everywhere and especially on Peacemaker. And thank I you. can't wait for everyone to see it. Seriously. Thanks. I can't either. It's, it was a fun show. And I hope that we get a season two because I had a blast. Right now, we're going to jump back into the podcast and chat with our, our boy, Ify. So stay tuned. All right. We might have gone to the best segment of the podcast of this of this lovely show which is the peace prize much like the eagerly hug award and the death to peace award we continue the trend of the peace prizes great naming convention (laughs) on this episode's with the butt baby award butt baby yeah this is the butt baby award its namesake is the scene in which um you know they're looking at the family Mm -hmm. and the kid's ugly and he explains that he it must be a butt baby and how he was his his like his his older brother told him about butt babies and he seems to have held on to this thing that an older brother might say to you when you were younger and held it as truth. Mm -hmm. And that's why I want to use the butt baby award for, for things that he might say that are so objectively wrong that 
they might be a little bit right. That's an attractive couple. That one looks like it came out of them, but the other one looks like a butt baby. A butt baby. Yeah, my older brother told me there's two types of babies. One that comes out of a woman's vagina, normal, and then butt babies, worse in every way, they come out of a woman's butt. You know, sometimes you do look at somebody and you like, you look so ugly, you might have come out of a butt. Yeah. Sometimes you just look at someone and you're like, damn. That guy came out of a butt. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. But, yeah, it, it really is, like, wild, but it is, like, such a perfect encapsulation of who Peacemaker is, mm -hmm. where he's getting information, wrong or right, and holding on to it for dear life as if, like, this is law. Well, it's fake it till you make it, baby. Yeah, that's literally, I, yeah. that's, that is the motto. Yeah, so congratulations <laughs> to that scene, and congratulations <laughs> to the first time of us giving the Butt Baby Award. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I want that on a shirt or something. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Uh, well, you know, thank you so much for listening and watching. Uh, we're going to have to get up out of here yet again, but make sure you subscribe. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and on Facebook, and share all your favorite moments for the show. Ooh, yeah, and do you want some Peacemaker merch? Ooh, Ooh I know I do. Well, if you want to check out the latest drop, check out shop.dccomics.com. Mm, yes, yes. Also, get yourself a DC Universe Infinite account so you have access to Peacemaker Comics and more. Also, also, just don't forget to stream the show and the Podly episodes on HBO Max so you can be super tapped, you know, super tapped in, all right? Cool. Well, mm -hmm. you know, that's all we have for you this week. Uh, see you around next episode. Keep the peace. Keep the peace. <laughs>